A Swift Kick in the Ass, episode 106. All big changes start with a swift kick in the ass. Join the journey of lifelong friends, John Curran and Tom Stewart, as they make conventional thought. Bend over and take... Life is challenging and difficult. No one gets out alive. Time to suck it up, Buttercup. Get ready for a monster-sized boot. Aim to help you get traction on personal change and get living. I am John Curran, your host. Join me as I share my journey, exploring the forces that motivate us to change and help us get through whatever life throws at us. A swift kick in the ass. Life on your terms. Welcome to another swift kick in the ass. This is your host, John Curran. Today's episode, passivity doesn't kick. It bites. Yeah, think about it. How many times in your life have you sat there... And you could have maybe done something, but you didn't. You sat there. You accepted what happened. Didn't respond. Didn't do anything. What happened? Sometimes we get lucky and it passes us by. But sometimes it bites you in the ass. And, you know, I think that it's important to believe that... Um, or not believe, but, you know, consider that things are what they are. You know, there's a conventional belief or a conventional saying that it is what it is. And I think there's some good in that to think that way. It is what it is. Um, so oftentimes I think we get so emotional and we get tied up and it, the situation gets made personal and we want to explode. And under those circumstances, sometimes it's good to just say it is what it is and walk away. That's not what I'm really saying. You know, that is a choice. Um, and passivity is a choice to accept something um, you know, without response, without assistance, without guidance, just accepting it. Uh, that's, it's a choice. Um, may not, it might sometimes be the, it might sometimes be the best choice. But what if we don't really know what it is? You know, it is what it is, right? Well, what is it? What if our understanding is wrong? What if we got the facts mixed up? What if what we thought was true wasn't? What if maybe we didn't have a complete picture? Or maybe we were connecting the dots. Maybe we weren't. Either way, we can get it wrong. And what we think it is, it isn't at all. I'll give you a good example. So recently I started Taekwondo with my son. He's nine years old. He just became a black belt. And now he's telling me, yo, white belt, go make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yo, white belt, when's dinner? I'm just kidding. He doesn't do that at all. But I am doing Taekwondo with him. He is helping me. I am a white belt. And for years, I sat there on the sidelines watching my son for the last three and a half years. Watched on the sidelines, wanting to do it and telling myself that 
my hand condition prevented me from doing that. Too painful. It would be too painful to hit things with my hand. It is very painful. I have something called the putrin's contracture. It's a genetic condition with my hands. It pulls my uh, my pinky finger and uh, the ring finger kind of back it, it, because the body will form uh, scar tissue, bands of scar tissue that connect the fingers like right over the ligaments and it contracts the fingers. Um, so I have to be very careful with my hands. But I also know that I'm supposed to strengthen my hands and anything I can do to strengthen my hands is a good thing. So now that I'm doing the Taekwondo, I realize that something I've been avoiding for the last three years, I've been avoiding for all the wrong reasons. In fact, I should have been doing this all along. It would have helped my hands. Um, I'm learning how, you know, when I make a fist to punch, my fingers, because of my condition, makes it very difficult for me to make a fist. But now with training, I'm actually able to make a fist. My hand is getting stronger because of this. You know, I might have a more, more difficult time straightening out my hand, but I think it might actually be helping to straighten it in some ways. I'm just going to have to see. But in any, in any regards, I'm not letting this stop me from doing what I think is the right thing to do. And it's to, 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 to take martial arts with my son, spending three years with him, and training myself as well. Because it's something I've always wanted to do. And I'm, I am doing this also a lot because of Tommy. You know, as you know, Tommy was in jujitsu, uh, jujitsu family. Um, but he's always been in martial arts, and I always admired that, and I always wanted to do it. And I thought, you know what? Life is too short. It's time to to do this. Uh, but you know, as I think on my think back on my life, I don't sit back. I'm not a very passive person. I take things on. And I don't let go until the problem's solved. That's why I'm successful, because I don't quit. Uh, I do. That's not to say I always get my way. That's not to, to say that it is what it is always as I think it is for me. Uh, I, I learn just like the rest of us. Uh, I'm certainly not perfect. I don't have all the answers. Um, I learn by trial and error. But, you know, as I think back about my diet and the changes in my diet, you know, who would have thought uh, that I would have inflammation issues that would cause moving and being hugged by my child, uh, pain, making it very painful? Who would imagine that? You know, I ate everything. I had no problems whatsoever, or so I thought. You know, I thought I had it figured out. And... Maybe you're at an age to where you think you have it figured out. But at 53, almost 54, I realize I don't have squat figured out. And it doesn't matter. Because there's nothing really to figure out. We just want to live the best life that we can. And it's totally up to us. And if we are unhappy with the terms of our life, then it's up to us to, to change them. That's the whole foundation of this show. Um, so if you think you have it figured out, I just want to nod my head and say, yeah, sure you do. <laughs> yeah. Come back and talk to me in a few months. Um, you know, life is continuously changing and adaptation is a way of life. Whether you realize it or not, we're constantly adapting to the change that is thrown at us. Nothing is ever the same. Um, people are you know, born. People die. Uh, people, you know, hopefully we grow old. Um, 
we give and we live a good long life. But as you know, that doesn't happen for all of us. Um, you know, when we're children, we have our, this view of the world and we have our whole life sit out in front of us. But that doesn't always happen either. You know, and what happens? What do we do when the bad things happen? Are we just going to sit there? Maybe, maybe we are. Um, maybe, you know, and rightfully so, you know, when, when, when someone close to you dies, of course, we're going to grieve. We're going to be sad. We're going to be emotional about it. You know, losing my best friend was tough. Um, there are, I reach, I think about calling Tommy all the time and I know he's not going to be there. But I re- realized that clinging on to that to that memory and to that pain, that emotion that he's not going to be there is not helping me. I have to let it go. And I've, uh, I've actually started meditating recently. Um, I think I'm over a hundred days into it, a uh, daily practice. Uh, I started out 20 days, um, 20 minutes a day and up on my own, I've been doing, um, some guided meditation through the calm app. And, um, I don't recommend, you know, a lot of different products, but I think I'm going to start doing that because, you know, I'm not getting paid to do, to, to make these endorsements, but I will say that, um, I've been using the calm app for over a hundred days. I absolutely love it. Uh, with my exercise routine, um, it just fits right in to do this on a daily practice, um, to meditate. And I, I just love it. I just, I'm getting so much benefit out of it. And it hasn't, it just came into my life at the right time. Uh, It has helped me deal with Tommy's death. Uh, and it's helped me to, you know, best accept it, that it is what it is, especially when it comes to Tommy's death. I can't change that. Uh, some things we cannot change, but some things we can. And that's what this show is about, focusing on what we can change and letting go of the things that we can't. But if you want true change, you are going to have to push yourself. You cannot just sit there on your ass. So get your ass moving. Stop sitting in the beanbag chair, eating Cheetos, watching TV, or maybe you're just sitting there listening to the podcast. Well, go ahead, sit there, eat your Cheetos, eat and listen to my podcast. I don't mind that. But after that, get your ass moving. You know, there are a lot of things, you know, start shaking up your world. Start trying to question your perspective your view, start questioning your view to say, you know, what if I think about it in a little slightly different way? It might just change everything for you and be like a light switch moment to say, you know what? I know exactly what I need to do. You know, I don't have all the answers, but I will tell you that throughout my life, I have had those light switch moments um, time and time again. Uh, when I called off my wedding, um, to the wrong girl two and a half weeks before it took some balls to do that but it had to be done it was the right thing to do and it was a light light switch moment for me it was like yes absolutely no doubt i gotta call this off uh and there have been many moments in my life like that like when i proposed to my wife of almost 20 years I, that was a light bulb moment for me. I knew she was the one. Um, you know, I don't have all the answers, but I, this, I know, you know, doing nothing is a choice and it may be the best choice, uh, but it may be the worst thing for you too. You know, I, I, I can't be the judge of that. Only you can. Um, and you might be good with the terms that you're, you're paying for that, you know, for that. So that's not for me to say. 
Um, but you know, what if you're wrong? <laughs> what if you think you're, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay playing this, but in the back of your mind, you know, this, this crap's bothering you and it's not going away. It's maybe been with you for a long, long time. It's been in the back of your mind or it keeps coming back up into your life. Maybe it's time you re-examine, take a look up, you know, take a look at it because Maybe life's trying to tell you, you don't need to just bend over and continue to take this. It doesn't have to be this way. So I'm going to start wrapping this up, but you know, at this part of my journey, um, Tommy's been gone a couple months and I'm trying to pick up the pieces of my life and also put this show back together. Um, I really do want to continue on with, uh, what Tommy and I started. I'm not exactly sure what f- form that's going to take, but I hope it's useful to you. Um, so at this time in my life, I think I'm actually in probably the best shape of my life, both mentally and physically, uh, through the working out you know, every other day or so um, for several years now. Um, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm hiking uh, 10 mile hikes. I've been doing that uh, throughout the summer a lot and just loving it. Um, it, And that too also helped me with the morning process. Um, And I'm meditating. I'm meditating every morning uh, right now, probably about 40 minutes. And I'm also meditating at night. Um, Even if it's just listening to, you know, a story um, or something, just to calm down and wind down and prepare myself for the next day. Um, you know, Tommy's death was very painful, um, but it is softening. And I, you know, I realized that I'm the problem with my life. Uh, you know, my job, my relationship, my life, these are my problems. And I am the problem. I'm the only one who can fix them. And it's amazing to me how life can start to change as soon as you recognize and as soon as you start to acknowledge that. Uh, to say, you know what? Hey, I'm, I'm at fault here. Uh, I was just in a very recent, uh, recently very highly stressful um, situation. I won't go into it, but it's one of the situations where you just want to choke the person because... You put yourself out there, you trust, and your trust is betrayed, and there's money involved, and you just feel screwed over. It's not a good feeling, but you have to take your own responsibility as well, and um, and in that, you know, uh, in that situation. I did have to take responsibility for my own actions. And I think it did help by acknowledging to say, hey, you know what? I feel screwed over here and I've been very emotional and I said a lot of things and I wrote a lot of things I probably didn't mean. Um, I really did mean them because as it comes out, the truth comes out, this bastard has it coming and uh, it's he'll get more. He'll get what's coming. Karma. We'll get him. Um, so start living, you know, by trying something new. And take this few steps forward. You know, get off your ass. Take a new approach. You know, it's all right to back off and regroup, but maybe it's time to, s- to stop. You know, maybe you have been doing that. Maybe it's time to start taking some actions. But ask yourself what you need. And how do you get what you need? You know, just asking yourself that question can help you help help you get the answer. Um You know, I I can't tell you how hiking has helped me and how it's a great analogy for this. Because with hiking you set a goal say for 10 miles 
and it's going to be tough and you prepare and you get your water and you get you know your your bars your nutrition bars and you wear good comfortable socks and your hiking boots and you wear layers and you know you you're ready to go and you and you do it and and it's a challenge and it's it's tough but it's it's rewarding and it's a you take to get there to get to the end all it takes is one step after another after another after another until it adds up to whatever distance you're trying to set, you know reach I love it. And being out there in nature and especially in the state of the Commonwealth of Virginia, beautiful here. Love it. And I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life, mentally, physically, spending time with my kids. I'm loving my life. It's not perfect. There's some things I'm working on, some things I'm developing. That's okay. I'm here. I'm enjoying it. And uh, I am enjoying the journey because the joy is in the journey. So until next time, you know, recognize our lives are going to continuous, continuously change. I'll bring you updates on my journey on the next uh, episode. And I really hope that you join me. Uh, until next time, keep kicking ass. This is John Curran. Peace. This marks the end of another episode of A Swift Kick in the Ass, placing it directly in the can. As much as I like to talk, even I have my limits, it's time to go. Catch me on the next show. For better or worse, whether you like us or not, please leave comments wherever you get your podcasts. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Visit our home on the interweb. I think you can leave me a voicemail there. You can also email me at john at a swift kick in the ass dot com. It's been my extreme pleasure. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope you got your ass moving. Until then, until the next time, I'm out of here. Peace.